It's just a matter of weeks before the unique interstellar comet known as 3I Atlas is expected to pass closest to the sun between the orbits of Mars and Earth. The trajectory is locked. The target is Mars. For months, the world's most powerful telescopes have been tracking 3I Atlas, a visitor from another star system. The official story was simple, a harmless comet on a tour of our cosmic neighborhood. But that story just fell apart. To put it mildly, the latest tracking data from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory sent shockwaves through the astronomical community. So when you hear it's passing by Mars, it's passing by Mars at a great distance. The object is accelerating, defying the laws of physics as we know them. It's on a collision course and we have to ask, is this an accident or is it an arrival? Trajectory of a ghost. Something is coming. For months, it was just a ghost. A faint smudge of light in the digital eyes of the Atlas Sky Survey, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. Cataloged as 3I Atlas, the I stood for interstellar, a rare and thrilling designation for an object born under a different star. You see, visitors like this are the ultimate cosmic tourists. They drift for millions, maybe billions of years through the cold, dark void between stars before stumbling into our solar system. The first one, Oumuamua, baffled scientists with its strange, cigar-like shape. The second, Borisov, looked and acted like a normal comet. But 3I Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar guest, is proving to be something else entirely. The initial projections were simple, almost boring. It was supposed to follow a gentle, predictable arc, slingshot around the Sun, and pass harmlessly by the orbit of Mars before being flung back out into the abyss. It was a fantastic opportunity to study a piece of another solar system up close, but then the numbers stopped adding up. Astronomers at Harvard, working with fresh data from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, noticed something deeply unsettling. The comet wasn't slowing down as it should. Instead, it was speeding up. To put it mildly, this was weird. Comets can get a small boost from outgassing, where the sun heats up ice and releases gas like a tiny rocket engine. What many overlooked, however, was the scale of this acceleration. It was too big, too sustained. It was moving at nearly 87 kilometers per second. That's over 194,000 miles per hour. That speed is faster than any natural object humanity has ever tracked coming from interstellar space. It was a true wow factor, a number that just didn't fit. The thing nobody tells you is that in astronomy, when the numbers are wrong, it's either a mistake in the math or the discovery of something entirely new. And the math was right. The real bombshell dropped when the teams refined the trajectory. The subtle, continuous acceleration was tightening its path, pulling it inward. Its new course was no longer a gentle flyby of Mars. It was a direct intercept. The announcement was quiet, buried in astronomical circulars, but the implication was universe-shattering. Harvard and NASA had just confirmed that an object from another star is on a collision course with Mars. This wasn't a possibility. It was a certainty. All of a sudden, a scientific curiosity had become the subject of intense, urgent scrutiny. This was no longer about a chunk of alien ice and rock. It was about a planetary-level event, a cosmic demolition scheduled to happen in our own backyard. The comet's hazy glow, its coma, was another piece of the puzzle that didn't fit. Since August, it had doubled in brightness, a surge far too dramatic for a simple comet. More bizarre were the strange spikes of high-energy ultraviolet light flickering within the haze. This kind of energy isn't part of normal cometary physics. It hinted at processes happening inside three eye atlas that were energetic, powerful, and completely alien. The carbon dioxide outgassing rate alone was off the charts, far beyond what's seen in any comet from our own solar system. It was as if a powerful engine was burning deep inside, venting fumes into the vacuum of space. The evidence was piling up, painting a portrait of an object that was breaking all the rules. It looked like a comet, but it sure wasn't acting like one. The object wasn't just moving, it was aiming. A clockwork comet. Many people are crazy about finding patterns in chaos, but what if the pattern is so clear, so mathematically perfect, that it can't be chaos. 
That's the question that began to haunt the teams watching 3i Atlas. As they analyzed the streams of data, the word comet started to feel wrong. A comet is a passive, tumbling snowball. It's messy. It's random. But 3i Atlas was anything but. Instead of stabilizing or wobbling, it was behaving like a guided missile, self-adjusting, accelerating, and course-correcting with unnerving precision. The trajectory wasn't just a simple arc. It was a series of tiny, calculated maneuvers. It was releasing plumes of gas in deliberate pulses, each one nudging it onto a more perfect collision course with Mars. This wasn't a celestial object falling through space. It was an object flying with intent. The proof came from spectroscopy, the science of breaking down light to see what something is made of. When they analyzed the light from the comet's tail, they found something that had never been seen before. The gas wasn't streaming out continuously. It was being emitted in perfect clock-like pulses, once every 17 minutes. For days on end, the rhythm was perfect, as if timed by an atomic clock. The thing nobody tells you is that these pulses weren't random. Each one produced a tiny micro-acceleration, a gentle push in the exact direction needed to align the object with Mars's orbital plane. It was an impossibly sophisticated form of navigation, a cosmic dance of unprecedented grace and purpose. No natural process known to science could explain it. It was, to put it mildly, the smoking gun. Whispers began to circulate, growing from hushed conversations in university hallways to encrypted memos shared between space agencies. Leaked notes, allegedly from a NASA insider, spoke of radar returns from the object's core that were completely unexpected. Radar should have revealed the signature of soft ice and rock. Instead, the returns were coming back as hard metallic signatures. This suggested the core of 3i Atlas wasn't a snowball at all, but something solid, dense, and artificial. It could be a massive chunk of metal, perhaps hundreds of feet across, encased in a shell of ice and dust. Some speculated it could be made of alloys not found naturally, indicating a manufactured origin. The 10 billion ton object hurtling towards Mars might just be a shell hiding a 400 meter metallic heart. This is where the story takes a turn from unsettling to truly profound. Avi Loeb, a renowned and often controversial astrophysicist from Harvard, and his team put forward a hypothesis that many were thinking but few dared to say out loud. 3i Atlas could be a form of alien technology. It fit all the facts. The impossible speed, the controlled acceleration, the clockwork pulses, the metallic core. Loeb proposed it could be a directed messenger, a probe launched by an advanced civilization eons ago. Its mission? To make contact? To deliver a message? Or perhaps something far more complex? He suggested it might not even be aiming for a direct, destructive hit. Instead, it could be planning a grazing maneuver, a close pass designed to deposit smaller probes into Martian orbit, or even to crash deliberately with just enough force to release detectable, manufactured materials for us to find. The evidence was undeniable. We were watching an intelligence at work. Red planet, red target. The date is set. The collision is projected for September 26, 2025. The final critical window for course corrections for the object to make its last tiny adjustments is between September 19th and the 30th. Observatories worldwide will be locked onto it by then. Every telescope on and off the planet turned towards the unfolding drama. But all the evidence suggests the adjustments are already done. The course is locked. The final approach has begun. So what happens when a 10 billion ton interstellar bullet with a 400 meter metallic core strikes a planet at over 194,000 miles per hour. The answer is simple and terrifying, a planetary resurfacing event. The energy that would be released upon impact is a number so large it's almost meaningless. Scientists estimate it would be the equivalent of 2 million megatons of TNT. You see, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated by humanity, the Tsar Bomba, was 50 megatons. This would be 40,000 times more powerful than that. It's an event that would dwarf the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. The impact would create a crater 60 kilometers, about 37 miles, wide and five kilometers, or three miles, deep. The planet Mars would ring like a bell. 
a colossal plume of vaporized rock and metal would be ejected into space, some of it escaping Mars's gravity entirely, while the rest would fall back down, blanketing the entire planet in a thick, superheated shroud of dust. For decades, humanity has been sending its robotic emissaries to Mars. Rovers like Curiosity and Perseverance, orbiters like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and landers like InSight. They are our eyes and ears on another world, a multi-billion dollar investment in science and exploration. In an instant, all of it would be gone. The rovers would be vaporized by the initial blast or entombed by the global dust storm that would follow. The orbiters would be sandblasted by the debris cloud, their electronics fried, and their sensors blinded. Decades of scientific progress, the slow and patient work of thousands of people, would be wiped out in a single violent moment. It would be the end of an era for space exploration on Mars, a tragic and devastating setback. But what if, as Avi Loeb suggested, this wasn't just about destruction? What if the crash itself is the message? A civilization advanced enough to send a probe across interstellar distances would know we are watching. They would know about our rovers. Perhaps the impact site is chosen specifically. Maybe the goal is to excavate something buried deep beneath the Martian surface, or to seed the planet with artificial, self-replicating materials. Many people are crazy about the idea that the impact could even be a form of terraforming, a violent, shocking event designed to alter Mars's atmosphere, perhaps releasing trapped water or changing its climate over the long term. The thing nobody tells you is that a destructive event can also be a creative one. From the ashes of impact, something new could be born. The impending collision raises the ultimate question, who sent it? A test for humanity. As we count down to the inevitable, the world is looking for answers. Is this happening overnight? Is this really true? It feels like we are all missing a key detail, a piece of the puzzle that explains everything. The conversation has shifted from the what to the why. If 3i Atlas is an artificial probe, then we are left with two chilling possibilities. The first is that it's a derelict craft, a ghost ship lost millions of years ago, its automated systems still blindly carrying out their final command on autopilot, a dead hand on the tiller, guiding it to a destination whose purpose is long forgotten. It's a sad, lonely thought, a final, pointless act from a civilization that may no longer exist. But it would still be the single greatest discovery in human history, proof that we were never alone. The second possibility is far more immediate and unsettling. What if the probe is not derelict? What if it is under active, intelligent control? This would mean its creators are not ancient history. They are out there, right now, watching. The impact on Mars could be a test, a way to gauge our reaction. Do we panic? Do we unite? Do we try to intervene? Perhaps it's a cosmic knock on the door, a loud and dramatic way of saying, hello. Or it could be a warning shot, a demonstration of power so immense it's almost incomprehensible. You see, a civilization that can accurately hit a planet from another star system can just as easily hit our planet. The message might be simple. We are here. Behave yourselves. The thing is, we have no way of knowing their intentions. We can only watch and wonder. This event forces us to look in the mirror. For all our technology, we are cosmic infants. We are spectators to a drama that began before our species even existed. If this is truly a first contact scenario, it is nothing like what we imagined in our movies and books. There are no grand starships appearing over our cities, no peaceful ambassadors. Instead, there's just a cold, metallic object on a relentless path, controlled by an intelligence we cannot fathom. We are left to sift through the wreckage on a neighboring world for clues, to try and understand the motives of the ghost in the machine. Are we ready for the answers we might find? What many overlooked in all the panic is the final bizarre piece of data. Photographs from the European Space Agency's Mars Express Orbiter have captured three small glinting objects in a high orbit over Mars. They are flying in a perfect triangular formation. Some speculate these are scout probes, ejected by 3i Atlas on its approach, now waiting for the main event. Waiting to observe, to record, to report back to their masters. 
The data from our telescopes no longer fits the story of a passive comet. Is this the end of a long journey for a dead machine? Or is it the first move in a game we don't know we're playing? What do you think is the true purpose of 3i Atlas? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more cosmic mysteries.